Hi everybody, Tom here, and I just want to take a second to give a little spongy moth update. Right now it is May uh, 19th, I think, it's Friday, here in the southwesternmost corner of Massachusetts in the southern Berkshires, western New England. Uh, by now, uh, if you live around here, you have heard about it at least. The spongy moth is hatching and or has hatched, and they are well on their way uh, to feeding and possibly defoliating a lot of trees. There are, uh, is a lot of information out there, a lot to process, uh, budgets to consider, uh, list serves that are going around neighborhoods, Facebook, social media, all kinds of stuff. I, I would like to suggest that the best information that you're going to get is going to be from the extension services UMass, UMass Green Info. Uh, I think it's ORG, Cornell University, the Connecticut Experiment Station out of New Haven, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's a lot of information online, but those are going to be the best places to get that information are from the universities. Okay. Next is your certified arborists, but I don't have to tell you we're really hard to get a hold of right now because we're doing our best to try to take care of all the regular things that we have to deal with as well as this outbreak. The good news is Gypsy Moth has been around for a long time, since 1869. Look up the history of it. It's now called Spongy Moth, by the way. The G word is a dead name. So Spongy Moth is Lamantria Dispar Dispar. It was brought here in 1869 because this poor fellow thought he was gonna corner the silk trade in the, in the market. That did not happen, it escaped. And what it does is it has this sort of cyclical spike that it does. The last time we had anything like this happen around here was about 40 years ago. I was a kid and it was bad. It was ugly. Uh, three or four years ago in Eastern Massachusetts, they experienced in 2017, 45,000 acres of defoliation. Doesn't mean those trees died, but a lot of them did, especially after the second and the third years of defoliation. Okay. So our focus as arborists right now is on those people that experienced defoliation already last year. That's going to be our focus because most trees will be able to tolerate a year of defoliation. And if you were paying attention last year, you saw them lose their leaves and you saw them put on a new set. But that takes a lot of energy. Talking about budgets, that takes a lot of investment on the part of the tree to put back another set of leaves in that same growing season. So those are the trees we're working on protecting. That said, we got a lot of tools in our kit, but the object is not to stop defoliation, it's to minimize it. We will never get every one of these caterpillars. The systemic materials that we use require the ingestion by the caterpillar of the leaves in order to get sick and fall off. So we need them to eat this stuff. It's kind of counterintuitive. The biological materials uh, like Bacillus thuringiensis, you know it as Bt. They have to ingest that as well, but it's the very early instars that we have to get, which means right now, immediately, if you're using BT, spray that. Um, and, and that's great material. It works really well. It gives them a tummy ache, but it's not going to get every one of them. Later stages, you might switch to spinosad, which is another material derived from kind of a byproduct of, uh, of bacteria. Um, they're available commercially. Homeowners can use them, but please educate yourself as best you can you can also physically uh, do banding that's going to keep the critters from crawling up the stem but it's very important to understand that the, one of the ways they get around is by ballooning they send out this little aforementioned silky strand and they literally fly through the sky and land into the tops of trees they can travel a quarter mile a half mile I think and that wind and that heat over the last few weeks didn't help. I'll talk more about the heat and the dry in a second. I do want to stress that caterpillars are also hatching way up in the crown. There's a bit of misinformation out there that those egg masses are only at the bottoms of trees. It's, it's simply not true. So they're hatching well out of reach of the sticky bands that you might use or even duct tape. It works. Uh, but that's only going to get some of them. I'm not saying don't do it, but you're only going to get some of them. Now, to the hot and dry. There are natural enemies. One is called entomophaga. It is a fungus. It's naturally occurring. Fungi need wet conditions. We thought we had it for a while earlier this spring. 
didn't pan out right when it, right when it counts. We've had a little bit of rain recently, but it tends to all come at once and it's gonna be hot and dry again for a couple of days. So these critters have hatched and I don't think the entomophaga is established enough. You'll see it a little later in the season and you'll see these caterpillars start to naturally die. There's also a virus called NPV that afflicts them. And in the grand scheme of things, that's what finally catches up and keeps them in line. But we're still in this spike right now. It's gonna last a couple, three years and it's gonna be hard to watch. And if we don't get the cooperation of nature with some rain at the right time and the suitable conditions for entomophaga to keep this caterpillar population in balance, we will continue to see defoliation and quite possibly tree death if it happens multiple seasons in a row. So don't panic, keep your trees healthy, keep your trees watered this weekend, keep your trees mulched, try BT, try spinosad, homeowner stuff, try the stickies, uh, banding, anything that you can do, smear these critters, whatever. We do hope there's some bird predation. Try to reach out to your arborists. Please understand that we're all out of our minds doing our best. You know, here comes Dutch elm disease. Here comes the orchard spray programs, et cetera, et cetera. We're doing our best. And there's not necessarily a lot of us that really make it our life's work to study this stuff and practice it responsibly and professionally. All right, that's what I have to say. Thank you, do your best, talk to each other, send people to watch this, send people to UMass, Cornell, uh, UConn, Connecticut Ag Experimentation, Experimentation Station in New Haven. Uh, find information online. Um, it's gonna be tough for all of us to answer phone calls and return emails and text messages. It's, we're just, we're out there doing it. And that's where I'm going. See you later. Thanks for your interest. Be well.